So my name is Simon Brown, looking at Iris Viewpoint, uh, which is part of Standard Online Share Trading product offering today. Going to be looking particularly at the charts. There, there's a lot more to the to the product range, um, and and I will come back to some of those watch lists trading from the the the, the, the screen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but right now, really, I want to focus on those charts um, and and what we can do with them. It, it is deeply powerful. Um, before we jump in is what is iris viewpoint how do you get to it you log on to online share trading you see on the menu up there it says viewpoint you click that um, and you'll be taken to the page now uh, online share trading is currently running a promotion and then nothing loads which is awkward um, where you can get level one pricing for free until the end of may uh, previously, they offered delayed pricing for free. Uh, level one, which means you see top level of bid and offer, comes in at 175. I take level two, uh, which comes in more. Let me show you what I mean by level two, is that if I'm looking at a particular stock for level two, I get the full depth of the buys and sells. I mean, all the way down. Um, there's someone looking to buy 200 standard banks at one cent and there's someone looking to sell 211 standard banks at 2.99 and 99 cents level one simply gives you that top line of of the bid and offer um, typically 175 free till the end of may more importantly is that you can get it you can get the delayed pricing uh for free under normal circumstances anyway and what i did what i i, I my key thing, what I like about about Iris Viewpoint, is aside from the, you know, it links in with OST, so I can pull in portfolios and trade and get watch lists and all the rest. Is that I used it to replace my trading plat, my my charting platform. I used to use uh, Ami Broker. My data for that was costing me 2,400 a year. Uh, that was end of day, not intraday data. Um, and I it meant I had to run a, a virtual machine on my Mac because. Ami Broker is Windows only. And what I end up here instead is that I simply have a situation where it's all web-based. I use the Brave browser because it's the lightest browser that's out there. It's nice, it's simple, um, and it, it, it just sort of works across platforms. And frankly, it's actually just cheaper. The one thing it doesn't do, which a normal charting package would do, is let you scan. In other words, you can't say, show me every stock that has an RSI below 30. Um, and for some folks, that is an issue. And if that's the case, um, then, then well, yes, then, then you know, you need to go and pay the bigger bucks. I've never used a scan function, so it's fine. So I'm looking at a stock standard uh, chart. I've taken standard bank. I'm going to go through all the different aspects of it. Um, obviously, in the first point on the left hand, sorry, right hand side here is price. At the bottom is time. Um, and right at the bottom down here is what you want to look at. So you could go look at a, a, a five-day chart as an example. And what you will note is that it immediately dropped into five-minute bars. Um, I can go and look at a one-year chart, and now it's dropped to daily. We can change that. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, we can go to five years. And then, of course, we can just go to all the data that there is, typically going back to the early 90s. Uh, as soon as we do that, of course, it drops to monthly. We can change that. We'll come to it in a moment. We can also uh, zoom around and, you know, zoom in and out. There's little icons down at the bottom here. Um, and we can go and play with those to give us a particular time frame. Um, this includes the charts available are all the JC listed uh, stocks, instruments, ETFs, etc. It is indices. It is currencies. It is commodities. Uh, local offshore indices. So I can, for example, go look at USD ZAR uh, and get the currency. I can, for example, go look at S&P 500 um, and go have a look at the US. I can, for example, pull up Brent um, and see how Brent is doing or potentially compare that to West Texas Intermediate. Um, and see how that is doing. All the commodities, everything there, nice and simple. Let's head back to Standard Bank, as soon as they are paying for this. So 
what do we got? We've got the chart screen uh, where it says MO is one month. So we can go everything from one minute to monthly. And I've got to say, the monthly charts are the wildest charts. Sorry, uh, 12 monthly. So these are annual charts. And let's go to top 40 for this. This is, I mean, you're not going to ever use this for charting because you've only got you know, 25, maybe 30 bars in total. Um, but I love the fact that I can get an annual chart. I mean, it just, you know, you know, for me, my favorites are monthlies, um, which would then drop us to that. You've also got quarterly charts, etc. We go monthly, let's go all. There is our JSC looking at monthly charts. Uh, someone's asking about logarithmic. Yep, we indeed, we can. And the format. Scales, log scale, done. There's your logarithmic chart of the, uh, in this case, this is the top 40 index. Logarithmic, much better, obviously, for longer time periods. There's a lot of data. And if we pull up Capitech as an example, uh, we get a much better understanding of the chart in log logarithmic. If we were looking at Capitech under normal circumstances, those early years we just don't see. Uh, what was I clicking on? So next to the name of the share, Capitec Bank Holdings, you see a little I, which is show and hide. So I can hide Capitec if I so wish. Um, and then a little uh, uh, gear, I click on that, is your format button. Let's quickly run through what we have got here. I'll come back to the different styles in a moment. You can make your colors, your borders, you can make your background. I like the black background with a uh, colored chart on top. You can change that if you prefer. Um, your price line, I typically go for a green. And I'll show you what I'm, yeah, that there. Sorry, I had it as red. I wanted to make it fatter. Your price line sits there. That is where it is currently. Uh, 922.59 is Capitec current price. Scales, uh, auto scale. I just let it auto scale. And that is your uh, right hand there, um, your x-axis. I let it auto scale. What you can do is go and you know drag it to your own particular if you want. Uh, we've got percentages uh, logs. You can lock uh, margins in terms of the size on either side. So it just tells you the amount of space it gives you, um, whether you want left or right, uh, whether you want lost symbol value, indicator value, uh, labels and indicator labels, and don't overlap them. And then your background. You can change your different backgrounds, etc. Uh, as I said, I like the uh, dark process. Some people prefer light. That's fine. Let me step that down there. So that just sets the, how the, the chart actually looks in the process. So as I said, on, on your, you've got there everything from one minute uh, to day to intraday. Stops at an hour, no four hour. I know a lot of FX traders like a four hour chart. We don't have four hour. We've got one, then we go day, week, month. Um, typically, my favorite is I'm typically daily, weekly, monthly. Occasionally, I'll drop into the intraday time frames if I'm going to be trading. You've also got those little candles there tell you what type of charts that you can have in terms of do you just want vanilla bars? Now, showing the same data, just displaying it in a different way of doing it. You've got bars, you've got candles, which is my preferred. I like candles. And I'll show you in a second why, because it shows you the highs and lows. So if I go to just a good old fashioned line chart, you lose some of the information in my view. And, and there's different opinions. You know, is one right or wrong? No. Better than the other? No. It, it's personal preference. It's really up to you. Um, you've also got hollow candles which is only hollow for the green ones, not the red ones. Uh, you've also got the Heiken Ashi. I can actually is kind of a candle, but it uses averages rather than absolutes. So what it's doing is giving you a much smoother chart. If we look at that, and I'll quickly go to just traditional candles, you can see less volatility in that sense. Uh, we've also got, as I said, line. We've got area. I like area, particularly when I'm popping something on a, in a presentation or something like that. You can scale the colors of the area. What I like about that process of, of the area is it's much easier to visually see. You know, if, if you're showing charts to, to someone who doesn't understand charting, candles is the most useless thing in the world. They don't understand it. A line chart is nice, but often it, 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 it's showing the information, 
but I find area does it significantly better. Um, and then we've got baseline, which basically says from your point, where's it going in terms of you know below or above what that particular baseline is. And now I'm suddenly realizing I don't actually know what baseline it references. In other words, why did it set that baseline at 116 and some change? And my honest answer is, I don't know. I Let me go to daily. I th think I know, but I'm going to be guessing now. Uh, so on the daily, it sets baseline at 3rd of March. I don't know why it sets. I don't know how. I need to dig into what it's actually doing. If I'm going there to format. Oh, base level 50%. Ah, okay. Ah, learn something new every day. So what it's done here is it's basically saying that base level is halfway between the high and the low for the period that you are looking at. Okay, that's quite cool. Yeah, so, you know, is, is that something you would look to potentially use uh, as technical analysis? Up to you. It certainly is great if you're looking to use it in terms of, of um, you know, trying to represent uh, something. You know, you're, you're doing a presentation, you want to screenshot, something like that. Nice for that purpose. But let's go back to my stock standard, which is candles. We then have a question coming through. Yeah, so as I'm moving my cursor, and we can change the cursor, and I'll show you the different ones in a moment. As we're moving my cursor, you can see up in the sort of top of the chart, Standard Bank Group, one week JAC, it's telling you what that open and high was for that particular period. If you're looking at weekly, so it'll be open, high, low, close for that week. And right down at the bottom there, it shows you date, which is 2018, February, week of 19th. So 19 Feb 2018 is that particular week. So you can go and see, right, the high here was week of 3 March 2018, and the actual high was 231. The low during COVID was in week of 233, uh, and that price of the low was 84.64. Yeah, right down at the bottom on the left down here, you can go and grab one day, five day, month, six month, one year, five year, and all, just nice and quick to give you a, a an overview period. We then have indicators. <clears throat> so we've I've got two loaded there already. I'll come to them in a second. Um, we can go and now pick the different indicators that we want. Uh, it includes uh, oscillators at the same time. So it's your MACDs, it's your moving averages. Uh, let's add a MACD. So there you'll see the MACD drops in the bottom. The first thing you'll see is that because I'm on a black background, the color range for that is totally terrible. So we go click on the uh, format button, we go to style and we change. The first thing as I do is I just make them larger and typically that makes them more visible. There we go. Now I can see the MACD much better. Still don't like that blue. It's still not as visible as I would like. So let's use a bit of a gray there. Perfecto. So now I can see my MACD, my two moving averages, and then my histogram obviously above and below zero. Um, we can also change the details of the MACD in terms of the inputs. I always use just the uh, uh, default, so fast for 12, slow for 26, and signal for 9. Um, and you can also set it on, do you want it on open, high, low, close, average, open, high, low, close, high, close. Do you want it on uh, high or open, low, or close? I use close. I always just use the stock standard of these. Uh, to the question, I'm clicking the little uh, gear button which pops up format next to the MACD. What you can see on the far right hand side is it's showing the values I requested in my board chart setup to show values. If you don't like MACD, you can click the X and it disappears. What I've got up here is two moving averages, 7 and 21, and you can see that the little I button is colored in, that's shown high. So I can immediately bring them back in. So I leave them there. 7 and 21s are two of my preferred uh, there. And like someone saying, could we add a 200 MA? We absolutely can. Uh, so there's moving average. I've added a third one. I go and click on the gear. First thing I want to do is make it my 200 moving average. And I need to make it a 
much bolder moving average, and now we're in business. Uh, not much data because it's showing weekly. If I drop down to daily, still not much. Why is it giving me such little amount of data? Um, Uh, something weird there. Okay. Um, but there's my 200 MA there. If I don't like it anymore, I can hide it or I can just somewhere delete it. In terms of indicators and uh, oscillators, pretty much everything that you're looking for is there. I think the one that we are missing is ADX, but I think they call it something else and it is there. Um, but you've pretty much got all your different indicators and oscillators that you would probably want. Um, you know, you, you've got all of your traditionals, your MACDs, your RSIs, your Bollinger Bands, etc. And then you've got a bunch, you know, a SMI ergodic indicator oscillator. Never heard of it. Let's have a look at what that does. So it looks very much MACD-ish to me. Yeah, kind of MACD-ish in terms of how it outputs. But I can see for my inputs, it's using something different. I can also see it's much faster than a MACD. The, the, the baseline MACD, let's quickly call that up, seeing as we have gone down this rabbit hole. You can see, yeah, okay, there is a bit of a turn already happening there. Uh, someone's saying, do I have to now do this every single time? Nope, I'll show you how to save in a moment. So the MACD does seem a little bit slower than that other weird thingy majig that we did find. You can see it's already rolling over uh, and crossed, whereas the MACD is about to cross. And that looks like an interesting index indicator. Okay, I think we might have to go do some more digging around that space. Uh, question around savings. Yes, you can. So up here, you can save. Now you can save this as a couple of different ways. You can save this as your standard bank chart. In other words, you call it SPK, and now this is when you come back to SPK, it's got all of your lines and everything in. I'll show you drawings in a moment. It's got all your lines and everything there. What you can also do is you can save it as a type, and you'll see under my load there, so I've got my lazy, I've got the ND, I've got the 721. So I saved different trading systems, and then, for example, I would pull up lazy, and it's, uh, I know it's going to try load a contract that no longer exists, but I would then pull up lazy and it would then say, no worries. It would pull up the indicators and oscillators, or I can save as standard bank. While we there, and let me get rid of those two lines quick. We've also got events, so I can say, show me news and show me dividends. So today we have two pieces from standard bank. Uh, news, financial information provided to IBC, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in other words, they've issued a sense announcement and dividend. X date is 22 April, which is today. Uh, if you hold the share at the close of business, you will be entitled to a dividend of 5 Rand and 40 cents. Final dividend payment will be 28 April, which is Tuesday. So it would normally be Monday, but the Monday is a public holiday, so you will get it on Tuesday. So you can see news events as they're coming through. You can see the uh, dividends as they are being paid. Um, and then right on the left-hand side, we've got a little arrow there. We click on that, and it shows us our drawing tools. Now, some of them are the fairly, oh, there's how we change our cursor. Do you want cross, dot, arrow, or eraser? Um, I'm always using a cross. So then there's, you know, your traditional sort of trend line. Click once, you don't drag, you just click, you move the mouse to where you want it, and boom. Um, then on that line, you go up to here and you can fatten it. You can uh, add, you want it dashed instead. Uh, you can add an arrow. Uh, or dots, uh, sorry, extended both directions. And then you can add yourself some arrows and you can extend it further down at the same time, making it go on path your point. In other words, it remains a straight line, but it goes into the, into the backwards and the forwards at the same time. Um, you can, of course, hide it. Uh, you can copy and clone. You can change orders, etc., And you can change the settings of it. Again, that includes colors and the like. Uh, you can change your coordinates, 
in terms of where it is, what it's telling you, which is interesting in note. It's telling you exactly what the price points are. I'm never that much of a of a of a sort of peeper in a sense. Um, so you've got your settings there. If you click away from it, you'll note that little box on the screen disappears. So now I could go and draw myself a second trend line. You will note it's now going to use the same settings I used previously. In other words, dotted, green, and extends both ways. Um, and now I've got myself two trend lines there. If I want to change, I just click on it. I can grab the button and I can move it. And I can go up to the delete up there and I can delete that trend line. There's a bunch of others. Obviously, you've got the, the stock standard trend line. You've got pitchforks. You've got a brush so you can draw things. Um, now, that's a bit random, but nonetheless, you can. You could you know, draw something there and then you can do the settings. You can say, no, I don't want that arrow, um, but I do want the other arrow. Uh, it's already as fat as it can be. Um, let me pick a different color for it. Let's make it a red arrow, um, uh, in a sense, to indicate something if you want. Um, someone's saying, could you use it for writing? You could but you don't need to because there is a text box. So we can, bring a well, we can bring a text box in and say, now why do you want a text box? There are going to be two reasons why you might want a text box. Let's pick a different color here. Um, firstly, you can just now write stuff on the chart to remind yourself what you're thinking. But also, again, if you're going to be taking a screenshot of the chart um, and you want to you know, send it to someone or something like that, nice, simple, you can do it there and, and you're off to the races. So you, know, you, you want to illustrate what you're thinking. For example, Corin Richards on Twitter, um, she often goes and she'll put a chart in and she would include text on the chart. And there's how you can then write your text box. You want to change it, you just go and you click, you can change, you can change what you do, and of course, you can remove it. Um, you've got the sort of crazy ones, whereas you're just sort of drawing lines left, right, and center, and you end up with some wild stuff. You've got to go figure what that's telling you. Uh, that's for the Garth McKenzie's and the Warren Peacocks of the world. Um, you've also got, in a sense, uh, price targets, and you can say, so this is really for if you're in a trade, um, your target is X. You've got your PL down at the your, your stop loss at the bottom. Let me just grab that. So what it's telling you, so you put on a trade, let's say you're going long or standard bank. Um, it's saying to you that and that and your target is right up here for, for whatever reason. Uh, and your stop is down there. It's going to say to you, if target reached, comparative to risk, your risk reward ratio is 4.2. If, however, your target was there and your stop loss is there, it's saying, hang on a second, your risk reward ratio is 4.3. Um, so, you know, manage that. Uh, you can go put some arrows. Again, you can select your colors, you can decide how they look, the visibilities and the like. Uh, you can move them around for if you'd wanting to show, either for yourself or if you're wanting to show something. Um, you can zoom in, uh, you can measure. The measure is quite nice. I actually quite like this. Uh, let me not measure, let me get, so let's, over the last five years, let's measure from the high, which was there, down to the low, which is there. And it tells me a couple of, up, uh, and then it logged off because I didn't do it. Ah. from the high to the low. So that tells me that that was a 63% a move from 146, uh, 146 uh, uh, rand move, which was 63% from that high. It took 107 bars. We were in a weekly chart. That was 749 days from the high in 2018 down to the low of COVID lockdown 2019. So you know, again, you know, to point and purpose, uh, you know, we can debate that, but certainly, you know, it, it, 
a lot of the stuff here might not necessarily make you a better technical analyst, but it certainly helps get you information. And what I use this for, for example, if I'm writing a FinWeek article and I want to say, well, the share is off how much since its highs of the last five years. Yeah, I can do it two ways. I can go and hover here and see, okay, the high was 231 and the low was X and I can crunch the numbers. Or I just come and drag this little box here and it says to me, call it 64% down and call it 749 days from that high to that low. Click and it then disappears. Um, and you've then got uh, to stay in drawing mode. In other words, keep that open. Uh, you can then lock all drawing tools. You can hide all drawing tools. Uh, objects tree is just showing you what you've got on your uh, 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 chart at this particular point of time and then you can delete as you want which would remove all of your drawing tools so that is the the charts I'm hitting my time I'll take some questions it is it's everything you want from a chart package and what I like most about it is that a it will give me live intraday if I want and B it's online so I can't come to it on my iPad, at least last I tried, because of the way the browser works, there's some stuff not viable, but it does mean that I can go from any computer. You know, I, I, I got a new uh, uh, computer at the beginning of March, my other one was dying, um, and I don't have to move files across. I just log in, it's saved, it's in the cloud, it's nice and simple. Uh, question coming through, can you buy and sell from here? You can, uh, you just simply click, you'd have to pick the account that you wanna trade from, um, and you can go and then place yourself a buy and sell order, no problem whatsoever. Um, you can also add and compare. So we could compare Standard Bank to uh, ABSA. Now what you'll see is it's put ABSA at the bottom because we did a compare. Okay. And you're saying to yourself, I don't want ABSA at the bottom. I want it overlaid, in which case... And why, uh, I see what's happening here. Ah, I've run into this problem before. I need to make them more visible and I need to make them better colors. There we go. More visible, better colors. And let's take Standard Bank itself and make it a line chart too. So there are your three. And what it does is, so what we've got there is uh, ABSA in the sort of gray, Standard Bank in white, and Capitec in green. What it's doing is those percentages that you see, as you'll note on the left-hand side here, it's pitched them all at the same point. So that left-hand side happens to be 30 March 2015. So it's saying from 30 March 2015, these are the move of those particular three stocks. So two of them are down and Capitec is up 73%. Uh, yes, and that excludes dividends. It, yeah, so that, that, that's a, a, a uh, price index only. What you can do, and it's not so much on shares, we're not going to get the offer on shares where it gives you a total return. But if you go and look at indices, and I go to J200, so J200 is the top 40. But J200T is top 40 total return. That includes dividends into the process. Okay, questions. Let me run through those. How do you pull your portfolio into viewpoint? So what you would do is you would have to get yourself a new tab. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me use that one there. So I've got a, a tab already sitting here. It's got some stocks in it. I go to that little hamburger in the top right there, uh, Mark. I go add widget, sorry, replace widget. Um, it's not there, so I will select for all. Come on. Select from library. Um, and you've got all the different offerings here market depths, market status, order pads, order tickets. And there is the one that says tutorial. Click on that one, say OK. What it's now done is it has replaced my price chart with a portfolio. 
let me go to a portfolio. Uh, this one has equities in it. Um, and another portfolio will have mm, some ETF. You can view it either like that, or you can click it and look at just summary, or you can look at it boxes such as that. Um, and you can, I mean, I'm going to go into this at a later point, so I'm going to park it for now. But when you are replacing widget, selecting from library, you've got you know, all sorts of different options. And what I've done here, as you can see, look at the top up here, is I've got myself all the different uh, processes that I use. I'm capped at 246 major tabs, but then I can have tabs within tabs within tabs. And that's when you can get real fun. And then, of course, you can go and you can get rid of a tab. Uh, the significance of the red and green. So red means that it closed below the open for the period, be that a minute, a day, a week, a month, a year. Green means that it uh, closed above the open. So let's go back to my J200. Let me go to a candle. Uh, and it's not going to like it because that's a total return, which only gives me end of day data. There it is. Um, so what you've got in the candle is the wicks show you the high and low of the day. The body shows you open and close. If it's red, it closed below the open. If it's green, it closed above the open. Uh, can I use EPS or PE to search instruments on this platform? Not on virus, view, virus viewpoint. Up, my have expired. What you would have to do is you can do that. Uh, I've got a session. There's a video. Check out the YouTube page. If you go to instruments, filters, share filter, now you can start searching for PEs, earnings, dividend yields, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Fred, can I put price triggers in the chart that informs you when a certain level is is reached? Not on the chart. That is a function of a watch list. Uh, I have a watch list. In fact, so either a share that you hold or a watch list. So these are shares that I hold. Uh, below there is a watch list. You click on the little uh, uh, star or over there, and you can go in and, and add uh, uh, either stop losses or price alerts. Price alerts either via email or via SMS. Um, Paul, you want to know if you can buy short in the platform? Uh, so you could trade yourself single stock futures or CFDs, which means that, yes, you can take short positions. You could also use warrants, which are retail options, which would enable you to buy put warrants. So, yes, short answer is you can make money off falling stocks, indices, commodities, et cetera, et cetera. You need to do it in a futures or CFD account. Um, that process is easy enough. Uh, Brian, so you're asking how I got stop loss on the chart. Um, that was just me making up the stop loss. This is not the chart recommending. What I do is I open the drawing there with a little arrow over there, um, and it is called the long position. And what you do is you bring it in, uh, used to be on the J200, and you basically just drop it. It then automatically assumes a stop loss for you on a one-to-one -one ratio. You then drag it. So if I was long, I would put my stop loss down. Okay, let's flip it because actually I am short this index at the moment, which to my mind is the right way to be. Um, you've got some settings here that you can do. You've got your coordinates. You've got your your visibilities, etc. Uh, not very much scale that you've got there. Um, what, you, what I'm trying to do is flip it, and I remember now that you can't. But so I am short Aussie from, from let me call up the Aussie because now I can't, the levels are different. Uh, in fact, let's just go to Aussie. Now I want the full chart. So let me call up. So Aussie is the index future for the top 40. There it is. So I have a trade on the go here. I shorted. I need a daily chart. 
I shorted last week at the 45,400. So that is my entry at 45,400. My stop is sitting up there. Sorry, my stop, and it's the wrong way around because of the colors. Um, and my initial target is a close of that gap there, which gives me a uh, risk to reward of 0.2. It's the wrong way around, which means five. And I don't know how to flip that and make it the right way around. I don't want text. I want settings. Settings on doing it, but certainly the key point is it's not going to tell you where to put the stop loss. It just gives you, just does your risk reward. Richard, uh, my 721 more clearly. Sure, let's look at that first. Disclaimer is it's designed for indices and uh, currencies, um, and it's really really simple. Let me remove that from the process. Is that when they cross down? next red candle, you go short. So you would have shorted at that point there, which was call it 48,000 on the top 40. Um, and you, the question is then was when do you, where do you put your stop loss? So for the very brave, you put your stop loss when it uncrosses, which would have seen you exit at around 41. So short from 49, and take the and close the trade at 41. Um, and at this point, you would now be long the index. There's a giant proviso. That trade I just showed you there is a spectacular trade. It's also the quickest and fastest fall off in the history of collapses. Look what happens when the market is moving sideways. It is less grand a trade to do. Um, there is a lot of whipsawing when it moves forward it, sideways. The trick is that it is a uh, it's a momentum slash trend based system. What happens when a market goes into sideways is you get killed. Now, what you could try and do is put some filters on and say that in a scenario where we are going sideways, I will ignore sell signals. However, you would then have ignored that sell signal, which you got in February of this year. So you got to take the pain with the good. It has massive drawdowns. Uh, EJ, relative strength between two shares is your compare. So here we've got top 40. We would add Capitec uh, and would have to do two things, make my line. If I'm understanding you correctly, if I'm not, come and shout at me. Um, so there we have, and let me remove those. They are sticking to the main one. So what it's not doing, if you're looking for a, a sense of a search for relative strength, you're not going to find that here. What you are going to find here is basically the two relative to each other. The hack for relative strength, because I is is, and I know Riet used to do it, and she did it manually. The hack for the relative strength is to go and say, so what is my top 40 up over one year? Uh, top 40 is down 15, call it 16 percent over a year. So you would go to filters, share filter. You would then say, uh, 52 week price range greater than minus 16. I would add market cap to make sure that I'm only getting my top 40 shares. Uh, market capitalization greater than let's say 10 billion. I'm just doing 10 because I fear I might get nothing. And there are your stocks that have done better, and I can search. And what we've got is DRD, which is not a top 40, and it's the gold stocks. No surprise on that. So, EJ, we are making a hack in that scenario. Um, Irina van der Berg, only JC data, other exchanges also, JC shares, and then indices, commodities, currencies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're not going to, for example, well, I haven't tried it in a while. Um, and now I suddenly can't remember the Apple share code. Yeah, okay, nope, there we go. There's Apple. 
in US dollars. So I'm even getting off, I'm getting offshore. I can pull in my various, you can see from my page over here, I've got the different indices, I've got the 10 year bond. Note 10 year bond sub 9%. Huh? That was 11 and a half just a little while ago. Commodities, indices, currencies, etc. I've got all my emerging market there as well. Someone saying they don't get Apple, it might be that I am on the, the sort of developer version of it. Um, how do you get a tab within a tab? Well, I'd hope no one would ask me because I always forget that. Um, so how do I get a tab within a tab within a tab within a tab? So it's not add widget. I don't want to, so I can carve my widgets. You can see on my lazy over here, I've carved three together. I don't want to carve my widget. Um, I can also do that and it detaches it. And then I can do that and it makes it full screen in its own. But I can't remember how I do the tab within a tab. And that is frankly embarrassing. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and, and, and check it out. I just don't remember how I did it. I can remove widgets. I can carve. I can do everything else. But I can't. Do, and I remember it was something that was weird, something that, 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 that absolutely confused me and, and didn't make sense at the time. But it worked, and now I'm unable to do it. Uh, the YouTube, Terry, all the videos are on YouTube. Just go and search for standard online share trading. Um, there'll be a link in the, in the in the email reminders as well for standard online share trading. You will find it there uh, within YouTube. Uh, Renee Kerr, it seemed not. I thought I could, but apparently not. Uh, so to load the portfolio, and now I deleted my tab, and now I'm running out of tabs. Um, so I really, really need to know how to do myself a tab. So I can't have new tabs. I have run out. I'm at my limit of six big tabs. So the easy part is up there. The, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, rename worksheet. No, I don't want to rename my worksheet. Ah, I think I have found it. Portfolio, and it won't let me, so I need to be in this view down here, and then, so you simply go and you say to yourself, so you get this list of all the different widgets, so it is essentially a widget, and there it is. I knew it was something weird, so I click the hamburger, and I say add widget, and you'll note it added an extra tab. I knew I could do it. I knew I had no idea how I did it, and there's your portfolio. So your widgets are, let's quickly touch on, let's add another widget, which will then add it as another tab. You've got adjustments, charts, courses, sales, histograms, uh, companies, market activities, market depth, which is bids and offers, heat maps, status, news, tickers, order pads. Order tickets, tutorials, portfolio, quotes, quote tickers, dividends, time series, trade analysis, trades, dividends, viewpoint survey. Hmm, didn't know about that. Viewpoint training and your watch list. Uh, Talapa, you're asking to compare sectors or shares with performance of the group. You can. You've got to set it up. Excuse me, manually. Uh, and you can see from this chart here, which I have set up. So what this chart here, and it is a very, very busy chart. I appreciate that. Is what I've got is JC sectors. Um, so the subs, Indy, Resi, Finney. I've also got the 201, uh, which is the mid cap. The white one is the J200, which is top 40. I then have S&P, uh, FTSE, uh, cash, momentum, USD, Japan, and gold. Um, why have I got Oh, I have got a currency here as well. I've got the new USD, which is the currency ETF. So this then just shows me a quick snapshot. And what we can do is say, so how has all of this done over the last five years? Now, this, oh, that was a lot quicker than I thought. So interestingly, the red line is the cash ETF. That basically tracks cash, and it has done second to best. Top performer is new USD, which is ZAR, 55%. 
Next in line comes my pale green, which is gold in dollars. Then comes cash. Then comes the Ashburton 1200 ETF, which is my preferred. S&P 500 in dollars at just under 30%. Right at the bottom is J1200, which is banks. J2, uh, J2200, J212, which is banks. And just above that is 201 mid caps and just ahead of that. And so we go. So you can do, and I've just set it up by adding compares and then get them all onto the same page. And I've never discovered a limit is if there is one. Uh, Peter, you want the value of the moving average to be as an R value on the right side bar. Uh, yes, we can. Um, so make my, and there they are. So I, I'd hidden them and then I just unhid them. And now you can see what I've got over there is essentially three pieces of data. The green one is the close. And then I've got my 21 MA, which is the red. And I've got my 7 MA, which is the blue. And how I manage that is again that little gear there. Um, and I can change my inputs and say what I'm particularly looking for. And if I want to change, for example, and put them on the other side, I would go to the gear for the particular stock. So a little weird. If you look up the top left here, next to MA, I can change some of the functionality of the moving average. I can change the color and the period and stuff like that. But if I want to change how it visually looks, in terms of having it on the appear on the right hand side there, I've got to go and do the gear next to the chart. Um, and there are my scales, which also include indicator last value, symbol last value, right axis. I could say left axis as well, or instead of. I can also say show me labels. Um, in other words, it'll show me Apple and then indicator labels, it'll tell me that they are MAs. Ladies and gents, that is the questions answered. I'm not seeing any more coming through, so I'm going to park it there. Uh, as I said, Friday, I am back. On Friday, I will be doing uh, ETFs, and I am particularly going to be focusing on bond ETFs. We'll kick off with what is bonds, how do they work, because uh, yield up, price down, etc. cetera. Um, and then we'll kick into the different ETFs that are available in that space. Um, and then... Next Friday is a holiday and so is Monday. So I'm not sure what we're going to be doing in terms of holidays. I will check in with Danao with that. But ladies and gents, appreciate all of your time today. Everyone have a great day further. Uh, cheers all.